December 6, 1989, a young man entered a classroom full of engineering students at the University of Montreal's Ecole Polytechnique, ordering the women to move to one side of the room and the men to leave. He shouted to the women, you're all a bunch of feminists and I hate feminists. He then opened fire. Six of the women in the room were shot dead. The gunman continued his rampage throughout the building, killing a total of 14 women. He also injured 14 more people, mostly women, before using the gun to kill himself. These were the beloved daughters, sisters and friends whose spirit, vitality and intelligence are deeply missed to this day and lost to us forever. In 1991, Canada's Parliament declared December 6th a National Day of Mourning and the National Day to End Violence Against Women. In memory of these 14 young women, we urge Canadians to pause and reflect on the very real threat and impacts of violence against women in Canada and around the world. We must continue to take action on a personal level and demand action from our government, schools, community to end violence against women and we can all take the first step ourselves. I'm proud to be the director of the Toronto District School Board and the steps we have taken to create an office of staff devoted to working with staff and students to educate about and eradicate all types of gender-based violence. This year, we are distributing posters and materials to raise awareness and encouraging schools across the system to take part in assemblies of remembrance and action for December the 6th. Resources and support from staff are available at www.tdsb.on.ca slash gbvp. Thank you.
left in a moment of silence. I think that speaking out um, on the issue of violence against women is important because if history has taught us anything, when things are not spoken with or dealt with, um, nothing, nothing changes. So the human condition propels us to use our voices and create change. Six million two ninety-three thousand six hundred minutes. How many moments do you have to live in? I have never read a proper description of the word gendercide. G-E-N-D-E-R-C-I-D-E. -E -E. But if its cousin genocide is defined as the mass extermination of human beings from a particular ethnic group or nation by a particular ethnic group or nation, then gendercide defines what happened on the 6th of December, 1989. 50,242,400 minutes. Imagine the sound, the click, the blast of Mark Lapine's semi automatic rifle. Imagine the gas, the screams and splash of blood from his proposed feminist rivals. Now imagine the daunting nightmares of all the survivors, the helpless criers. 14 million. 716,800 minutes. I must have been just over four at the time. And I wonder if I wailed, pierced the evening silence with the haunting howls every time the shots rang out and another angel got her wings. 13,140,000 minutes. And I'm curious. How many more like me protest like that because they knew what we all know now? That no one will fix the bridge until somebody has fallen. And oh, how we have fallen. And fought. Fallen and fought and fallen and fought and fought and fallen for the fallen. And if the women continue to fall through the planks, then the media is not there to film it. Does it make a difference? 12,088,800 minutes. Yes. I want to believe that even at the age of four, injustice struck a chord in my soul and cried out until my pen dried out in between the spaces, between the headlines where they lay. Rest in peace. Even if it is only after 11,563,200 million. So speak up and protest to stop the violence. It's not something we can do alone. Because 11,037,600 minutes is how long injustice can leave us to live. I want all elementary, middle school, all students to realize that if you see violence against a woman, violence period, it's, some, it's, it's your turn to speak out.